Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. My name is Bas, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can animate this app activity dashboard. So I've got this composition here with these kind of numbers in it and these graphs and this stuff, like kind of like of an you know, a health app dashboard with this uh, stuff. And I'm going to show you how I animated this stuff, you know, coming into the screen. Some basic stuff, but it looks cool and techy. And we uh, just to break it down, we have this upper part here, which has, uh, it's kind of growing into the screen, everything, and these bars are moving up and the numbers are counting up. So that's pretty easy there. Then we have this daily goal. It's just uh, opening up the two circles and the number is uh, counting up. This one, kind of the same thing, number counting up, the button appearing and everything. And at the bottom here as well, everything is kind of growing onto the screen. So it's just pretty basic and easy stuff, but it, uh, when combined all together, it looks pretty sick and just a really nice way of you know, animating this kind of app stuff. So I've had this, I have this uh, clean composition here with all these four compositions, pre-compositions in it, and we're going to go through them one by one. So let's start with the first one here. We have all, a lot of layers here, 44, because we have all of these different uh, shapes here. So we're going to start with the beginning is this background shape here. I'm gonna open it up and go to contents, group one and path one. I'm gonna go uh, zoom in a bit here and then create a keyframe for the path and then go here and then select all of these shapes, these uh, anchor points and hold shift and drag them to the left. And I'm not using the scale option because if I use scale, it scales these corners weird. So I just want to animate the path kind of growing. So I'm going to give this some easing with my uh, plugin flow, which I highly recommend. Gonna go to quart here. And uh, no, let's go with this one so it's kind of comes into the screen fast, so let's cut the layer off right here. So then it push, pushes in like that. Looking good, all right. Then we have these dividers, these four, these, you can't see them maybe a little bit. We have these four really small uh, thin lines here. I want to select all of them, no, select one of them, add a trim piles effect, and then go to end here, and then put this one at zero, so now, this one kind of grows, it's the bottom one here. Let's copy this and put that at these ones here. Let's cut the layers off by holding Option and then in bracket, pressing U to see all of them. And then as you can see, they're growing in. And just give this some easing here as well, this one, and then offset this stuff a bit, only all one frame. So they come just right after each other. Nice. Then we have this calories uh, text here. Let's go to P for position. And then drag this to the left here. And maybe do the same with this one. I think I will need to delete this. Um, copy this. Um, yeah, like that. Position to the left here as well. Nice. And this one and this one that's come let them come from, let's put them up here. Oops, I wanna put them with these ones here. And I'm going to give this a position as well and maybe have them come from the from the right, like that. So, all right, and give this some easing, like they kind of jump in, like they're popping into the screen. Let's play this back. And have this calorie come in a bit later. I'm going to duplicate this one, pressing Command D. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I am duplicated. And then I'm going to double click it and make it as a slash and go to the P for position here and then drag this over there. So we have a separate layer for that. Nice, and then maybe give this a bit earlier and the calories a bit later to have some offset in these layers. So that looks cool. And then maybe give this one, go to the T for opacity and make it start at zero so we have kind of this fading in of that one we have all this different these different effects and then i'm going to give this uh, I, want to, I want these numbers to count up so i'm going to give this a effect let's go to help and type in slider and it's under expression controls you can so go here to effect expression controls and slider and they have the slider control i can slide this up we have this thing here doesn't really do anything yet. So I'm going to um, kind of parent a parameter to it. So we have, if I open this up, the, the text, let's just give this the correct name like that. If I open this up, I go to text here and I have source text. And the source text is what it says, is the source of the text. What is this 
saying. So now it's 486. So we're going to click on the for source text and then this pick whip here, the property pick whip, I can click and drag and slide it over to the slider here and then let it go. So it's at zero. And if I now turn up the slider, then we have this number going up. So if I go get a keyframe here and then press U to open it, and then here I'm gonna type in 486. So we have the keyframe going from zero to 486 and it's kind of counting up. But as you can see, we have a lot of, we have decimal points and we don't want that. So we don't need to open up the expression because it added an expression, double press E on the keyboard. And then we have this expression. So what this says is this sort te source text needs to look at the effect called slider control, slider control, and then at the slider, the slider. So it kind of copies what this says, but I want to add an expression in front of it and it's called math with a capital M dot round. And I'm gonna open parentheses here and then delete this one. And at the end, I'm gonna go close parentheses. So math dot round, this whole thing. What that does is that it's um, rounding out the math to zero uh, decimal points. So now it's just doing this. So now we're gonna reposition those keyframes when it's coming into the screen. Nice, so maybe it can take a little bit longer. Just give it to some basic easy easing. Nice. I'm gonna go double E again and then click and press command C here. And then for this 950 layer, we're gonna go to our source text as well. So text, source text, pressing option on the stopwatch and then click and paste. And now it's, it's uh, we have the same expression here, but it's like it's, um, not working because there is no slider effect on this uh, layer yet. So go to effect and add the slider control and then boom, it works. And then we need to, of course, keyframe this and press U and this was at 950, I believe, like that. Give this some easing, easy easing. Cool, so that's that. Then we're going to animate the rest to so all of these all these, but I'm gonna select everything below here and kind of lock it. If I only have these data lines to uh, work with, so I'm going to select all of these little dots here, like this. Only the ones which are just small dots. And I'm going to go to scale, click on the key uh, stopwatch, cut the layer off here, Alt or Option uh, in bracket, and then zero. And then I'm going to select all of these and give this a easy like this. So now it's, yeah, they're kind of growing in. And for these ones, I want the, I want kind of this line to grow from the bottom up. So um, what I, the, then these are not, this is not a stroke, this is a fill. Of course you can do this with a stroke and then use a, uh, use a trim paths effect, but I want this, want this to have a gradient going down up and you can have that in Illustrator only from left to, or in After Effects, I'm sorry, only from left to right. So that's why I made it fill, but it's a really easy solution. I'm gonna click on the pen tool here. I'm gonna zoom in, and click down here and then hold shift and click up here. And then give this a, like make it blue. And then I'll give the stroke width just as wide as the line, maybe a little bit wider, yeah, like that. And I'm gonna open this up, contents shape one, stroke one and then for the line cap i'm gonna go to round cap so it's rounded out cool and i'm going to duplicate this thing and place it over there and do that with all of these so duplicating it and then placing it exactly over the line Oop. exactly over the line i said um what we're going to do next we're going to add a trim paths effect to uh, these layers here and then uh, have them work or kind of function as a mask for the gradient orange layers. So three more to go. Duplicate, duplicate, and duplicate and position. And then I'm going to click on my uh, pen tool, the letter G on your keyboard, and click and drag while holding shift, drag them down. So they are kind of just a little bit longer than the shape it's going to mask. This is a bit bit of tedious work and it's you know more of the same. Um, but once you're done, it looks really great. So just do this stuff. And I know animating is not always really fun. Sometimes you have to put in the work and do a lot of the same stuff over and over again to make something look cool. But as I'm talking here, trying to fill the time, we're almost done. 
Uh, this one is good already. Um, make sure to hold shift. All right, so now they are there. And then we're going to add a trim paths effect. So open one up, go to add trim paths, open it up and keyframe, go back a little time a little bit and go this to zero. So now it's growing up as you can see. And then I'm going to give this some easing, this one. Nice. And I'm going to cut all of these layers off here. Boom. Select the trim paths effect and paste it over there while I'm standing on this first keyframe. So it pastes all of the keyframes in the exact same spot. Nice. So boom. So I think they are a bit too fast. So press U, press the tilde key while hovering here to make it full screen. And then you can kind of drag it out and retime this stuff a little bit. Yeah, that's great. But now I need to place every line here above the uh, line itself, above the orange line shape here. So uh, press U to close it all up. And these are the orange lines in here. So we're going, and this one is the first here. Oops. <laughs> and I'm going to place this below, above that one and this one above that. So every uh, orange layer needs a blue layer above it. Um, so I can uh, use the blue layers as a track mat. So I'm going to tell After Effects, hey, uh, these orange layers can only be visible within these um, other orange layers. Oh, I forgot this one. Sorry, um, these orange layers can only be visible within these blue layers. That's why they are overlapping like this. Okay, nice, cool. So now, hover again full screen. This one, I'm going to select all, maybe select all of these, go here and then cut them off. And then click on the bottom one. So that's the first um, orange shape here. And I'm gonna go to my track mat here and go to alpha mat shape layer one. So that's this one here. So now this uh, data number eight layer is only visible within this shape layer. And this shape layer is kind of growing upwards, as you can see. So it's only visible in that trim paths effect. So I'm gonna do that for all of these. All right, so we're done. So now you can see that they're growing up like that. So now we need to offset everything. So this is kind of a tedious work as well. I'm going to zoom in here so I can only see one frame. And if I open this up and I can boom, I can just place everything apart one frame. Just keep in mind that all of these need to, both of them need to um, move one frame. So the blue one as well, because they are just need to have the same timing, of course. So move everything up one frame. All right, cool. So now everything is moved up one frame. Only these are like two, two of layers are one frame. And you can use some tools for this. I have this Rift uh, plugin here, which you can use uh, and you can sequence layers, but because these are uh, double layers here, that doesn't work. So this was like a minute of work. So it's not that big of a deal to do it manually sometimes. So now it's kind of going from left to right growing, which is cool. And then I'm going to select all of these and then kind of drag them inwards because I'm going to do the timing a bit. So while this shape is growing, I want them to start already here. Yeah, kind of like that. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and then uh, let's unlock all of this and the dividers. We can drag them in as well. They can start a bit sooner and this stuff as well. So let's all all the stuff kind of animates on screen at the same time. And what I need to do uh, now is add a uh, mask because the calories and all this stuff is uh, visible outside of this gray layer here. It overlaps, of course. So I only want this to be visible within this. So we can do the same thing as we did before with these um, um, trim paths. We do have a track mat here, but I'm going to use a different effect and it's called a set mat effect. So I'm going to go to calories and go to help and type in set mat channel set mat. It's over there. And then I can select the shape I want it to be masked in. So uh, go to shape one. And now it's only visible within that shape number one I did here. So that's a really cool effect. So I'm going to paste that on these two as well. Placed, pl pl pasted. Jeez. All right. And then uh, here we have the finished one. Cool. All right. Close that up. So that's number one finished.
Okay, we're going to leave it at that for this video. If you want to see the whole thing animated, you can follow me on Patreon and support me there. There you can also download the project files for this video and all the other tutorials I create. Plus you can see extended and exclusive videos. So also the extended video of this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, bye bye.